Good morning, Doctor. Oh, good morning, Dr. Bolak. I'm pleasantly surprised to see you here at such an early hour. Dr. Coleridge, it's perfectly natural for you to resent the way I came to join your staff. Thank you so much. But at the same time, I hope it doesn't affect your judgment of my ability. I'm really quite competent. Somehow, I've never doubted that. I'm not a dilettante, and I'm absolutely dedicated to my job. Moreover, I'll be available to you at any time, including an early hour such as this. You're very generous, Doctor. But I had the impression that your reason for coming to Riverside Hospital was to be able to get on with a research project of your own. I do have a project, and I'd like to give it as much time as I can. But I'll be available to neurology whenever I'm needed. Well, that seems perfectly reasonable. I think it's more than reasonable. I'm very good at my job. And once you realize it, you'll be glad that I'm here. We'll have to wait, won't we? Oh, in the meantime, I'd like to introduce my son, Roger, who's in his second year of residency here. Roger, this is Dr. Nell Bolak, who's uh, joining us in the staff as radio neurologist. Uh, she'll be doing both the services. How do you do, Doctor? Nice to meet you, Dr. Bolak. I couldn't help overhearing your conversation, and I must say, all my instincts tell me you're just as good as you say you are. Well, thank you very much. It so happens I am. <laughs> Well, since you've arrived at such an opportune moment, Roger, I wonder if you could take Dr. Bolak on a tour of the hospital. Uh, give her a rundown on how things work around here. I'd be glad to. And when you've finished, show her office. I put her in room 678. Fine. Uh, I'm sure you won't mind if I don't show you around in person. Not at all. Excuse me. It's really very nice of you, and I do appreciate it. Well, Dr. Bolak, it's not every day that we get an addition to our staff with your qualifications. So it's my pleasure. Shall we go? Mm. By all means. Why don't we start with the surgical suite? <sighs> Dr. Coleridge, may I say that I find you very reassuring? Oh? <laughs> I knew, of course, that the facilities at Riverside Hospital were outstanding, but uh, till now I'd found the personnel uh, rather disappointing. Uh, which way is surgery? Right this way, Dr. Bolet. <laughs> I know you're really fascinated with my struggles to hit the little blue vein, so let me bring you up to date. <laughs> I'm getting better. I just drew blood from Mrs. Santos, and she didn't cry, and she didn't throw anything at me. Smile. Sorry. I thought it was sort of funny. How's your brother this morning? No change. He's just the same. I spent a lot of last night reading up on spinal injuries with coma. They make it sound pretty bad. Look, the coma may be persisting, but that doesn't have to mean anything. Sure. One trouble with being a doctor is, is that you appreciate all the things that can go wrong. Which makes it hard not to worry. Is that what you've been doing? Imagining the worst? I've been trying not to, but I keep thinking that he's been out too long. The chances are that means real damage to the spinal cord. I just hope I'm wrong. You could be. You've been wrong once already this week. Was I about what? <laughs> Faith Coleridge. I had dinner with her last night. She isn't the sort of person you said she was at all, Pat. She's not? I don't know where you got the idea that she's bland and sexless with nothing happening inside, because she's really full of life and feelings and all sorts of Fascinating idea. Faith Coleridge? Uh -huh. I don't believe it. Well, we talked a long time. You both talked or you talked and she sat there. Yeah, she, uh, she told me all about why she got into medicine. You know, she started out to be a vet. Well, you really do know more about her than I do. And she told me about her family. She uh, seems to like her father more than she does her brother. 
Well, she's not alone in that. But Roger's a first-rate surgeon. You have to say that for him. <laughs> Save Frank's life. I think uh, Faith respects Roger as a doctor, but uh, beyond that, she certainly seems to have a lot of reservations. Uh, but the main thing was is that I, I thought of plenty to say. I mean, we shared things. It was really neat. Glad you had a good time. Good time? It was terrific. And I know she likes me, Pat. You can feel when you're really communicating with someone, and there's a, all that interest in what you're talking about. Except. Except. Well, she said she likes me. But she says she wants to be friends. <laughs> oh, friends. <laughs> that sounds more like the Faith Coleridge I know. Oh, she's just being cautious. She... I don't know, there's something bothering her. I don't know what, but maybe she's as scared as I am. Oh, you're not really scared. Well, sometimes I give a terrific imitation. I suppose it's because there's so much more responsibility in being more than just friends. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and since you're so much better at this sort of thing than I am... Better at what sort of thing? Girls. I want you to help me. Oh, come on, you're doing fine. Except that I don't know what to do next. And Frank's the one in our family who really has a way with girls. The thing is, he never had to work at it the way I did. Pat. Yeah? I'm only asking you because I don't know what to say about Frank. But I do want your help. You sure? Uh-huh. I, I need some way to catch her attention, some way to... To make her think you're romantic and exciting and have hidden depths. <laughs> Is that asking too much? <laughs> Nothing's impossible. Oh. <laughs> well, we can try. Where do I start? Why not flowers? Flowers? Single flowers, hidden in places where Faith will find them. In her locker, in her message cubicle. Anonymous. Mysterious. That's pretty good. And inexpensive. <laughs> well, I wasn't worried about the money. When do I... When do I tell her the flowers are for me? You'll know when the right moment comes along. I just hope I know it when I see it. You will. Uh, Ed, did you uh, see him this morning? I just looked in. And uh, I, I think we can have some real hope today. From what I read, there really has to be some progress. Yeah, there, there should be. But he's staying under longer than I like. Is that as bad as I think it is? Well, if it goes on. But he seems to be responsive to loud voices. Then he goes back into a coma. But if he doesn't come out soon, I'm going to be very worried. And last but not least, your office. Uh-huh. It's not the largest on the floor, but it's not the smallest either. You should see what they give the residents. Oh, I remember only too well. This is fine. Well, I'm glad you like it. Very much. Thank you for such a thorough tour of the hospital. Well, I just thought I'd keep on until you got bored. Bored? <laughs> I can't remember the last time I was as pleased and excited as I was this morning. For the past three years, I've had a research project on the shelf for lack of funds and equipment, and... Now, here I am, where I'll have everything I need. That sounds great. Dr. Bolak, may I ask an impertinent question? Well, you can ask. I don't promise I'll answer. <laughs> well, I can't help but wonder how you managed to convince Dad that he needed another person on the staff. And he's been having fits about his budget for months now. I have my ways. Well, I could easily see how you charmed him with your lovely smile and all that intelligence except that when he introduced us i had the distinct impression there was a certain coolness <laughs> frosty i'd say <laughs> i'm prying you don't want to answer no i don't mind the truth is that marshall westheimer head of the medical board happens to be married to my first cousin oh. <laughs> add on to that the fact that my family has been contributing to the hospital uh, since it first got off the ground and uh, They've been making generous contributions ever since. So, in other words, Dr. Westheimer spoke to Dad and twisted his arm off, right out of the socket. Uh, I'm afraid that 
charm and feminine wiles, well, they sometimes serve a useful purpose, can't compare with good old-fashioned clout. Well, if you ever find Dad a little stiff, and he can be pretty cool when he wants to be, or if you need any sort of help, I hope you'll think of me. Well, that's very kind of you. Thank you. It's always difficult moving into a new situation. With a little luck, I'm over the worst of it. I just want to get settled down and get to work. I'm sure that can be arranged. <laughs> well, after such a thorough tour of the hospital, I, I feel as though I know where everything is and exactly where to find it. And if you ever need any help and I'm not available, I'm sure you can always turn to your cousin. Actually, I don't think Marshall's expecting me to be asking any more favors. Well, in that case, if you do need any help, or just want an analysis of the quirks and vagaries of the various staff members, I'd be glad to fill you in. Ah, where the bodies are buried. <laughs> <laughs> or how to get your requisition on top of the pile? Well, that's very thoughtful of you, Doctor. I may take you up on it. Well, I hope you won't forget. And the name is Roger. I won't forget Roger. And if you're ever pressed for time, which I'm sure you will be setting up, and you'd like to duck out for a quick bite, we could talk over lunch. There are wheels within wheels in this place. Well, that's very nice of you. It's my pleasure. I don't want you to think that the entire Coleridge family is opposed to your working here. Actually, I'd already figured that one out. <laughs> well, here you are. Is this it? Yes, Seneca, this is it, and it is perfectly adequate. Uh, may I introduce my husband, Dr. Seneca Bolak? Uh, this is Dr. Roger Coleridge. How do you do? Nice to meet you, Dr. Bolak. You never know it, will you, darling? You know, it's entirely possible that you may walk in sometime on something that you don't want to see. Yeah, well, I thought I'd come by before I left for the airport. Uh, that's my page. I'm afraid I'll have to get going. Oh, Roger, thank you again for the tour. Not at all. It was my pleasure. Nice to meet you, sir. Yes, nice to meeting you. Who was that? Never mind. Seneca, what are you doing here? Well, I've been going over the whole thing, and I've decided to do something that just may shock you. Uh, is this the neurology desk? Well, sometimes it's pretty hard to tell in this place. Look, this is Mr. Zabo in room 618. Did you page Dr. Roger? Co never mind, never mind. He just came in. You shouldn't be twisting your back like that, Nick. I shouldn't be doing a lot of things, one of which is relying on you to tell me what's going on. Well, why? What do you mean? Well, what's with the accident to Frank Ryan? Well, Nick, you knew he was hurt. Don't con me, Roger. I got a lot of pieces in my head about Frank Ryan, only I can't put them all together. Now, something's out of whack. I want to know what. Well, uh, you're way ahead of me, Nick. I don't know what you're talking about. What I'm talking about is I had a cop in here asking questions. Bob Reed, who used to be Ryan's partner on the force. Yeah? What was he saying? He wanted to know why Ryan was in here to see me the afternoon before he had his accident. What did you tell him? Well, I told him it was about the political campaign. Oh. What I didn't tell Reed was that Frank was in here about you. Me? Yeah. Oh, Eric, thank you very much. What did Frank want to know about me? He want me to cut off your credit. Oh. Well, I, I guess I did mention something to him about uh, being in sort of deep. We're old friends, you know. He didn't sound very friendly about you. Well, that's, that's just his way. Thanks for not saying anything to Bob Reed about me. I didn't mix you up in it, Roger, because I didn't want to get mixed up in it. Now, crank me up. Yeah. Sure, Nick. Yeah, and what I want now is to get myself completely out of it. You are going to make me invisible. Invisible? Yeah. For all the time I'm in this hospital, I want you to keep the cops away from me. I don't want to see them. Pour me some coffee. Uh, Nick, you know I'd like to help, but I don't see what I can do. 
Now, Frank's only been off the force a few months. To his friends, he's still a cop. And when he gets hurt, they're going to be asking lots of questions. Well, they don't have to ask me questions. They can ask somebody else. Uh, two sugars. Well, you can tell people I'm too sick to have visitors. But you're not. It'd look funny. Roger, when you didn't make your payment, I had one of my friends drop a bowling ball on your foot. You had two broken toes. Would you like to try for four? Nick, I can't do it. The only person that gets in to see me is my runner, Herbie. But, Nick, the hospital would know. Think of something. Frame. Well, uh... Maybe, maybe I could uh, say that you're suffering from emotional fatigue and order no visitors for three days. Hmm. Well, yeah, it's more like it. Well, I'll, uh, I'll give it a try. Don't try, Roger. Do it. I'm not sure I can handle any surprises today, Seneca. You'll be able to handle this one, though. I want to apologize. For what? For my behavior last night, for a lot of things. I'm sorry. I know you have to be pretty unhappy to be doing what you're doing. I think you could say that. But I still don't want you to do it. You may not be able to tell it the way I've been acting lately because of all the arguments we've been having, but I do love you, and I want you to come back with me. Seneca, it won't work. It might. Maybe we could give it a try. There's a time we used to be very good friends. That was another time and another place, and we were different people. <sighs> Loved you so much, I couldn't bear to let you out of my sight. And I didn't want to be away. But we don't feel that way now, do we? Not this minute, no. But, but if you're willing, maybe we could recapture some of it. I'll try. Will you? Now you're the most fascinating woman I've ever known, and I, I, I don't want to lose you. I'll do anything you want. You're right, this is a surprise. The truth is, I, I didn't think you still cared this much. On the plane ride in, I, I made a, a mental checklist of the qualities a good husband should have. Love, consideration, dedication, awareness of the other person's needs. It was a good list. And then I... I checked myself against how I've been treating you lately. How did you come out? I flunked. Seneca Bolak, not at the head of the class? Oh, I don't believe it. You see, now, you see, now that, that's what you did. I mean, I arrived at your door full of good intentions, and you zinged me the moment I arrived. I, I forgot everything, and I lost my temper. If it was my fault, I'm sorry. I, I guess there's been a lot of that last few years. I don't want to be mad at you, and I don't want you mad at me. I want us together. Because I love you, and, and I hope that some of you still loves me. There are other considerations. No, no, come back with me, please. Not for long, not for long. I'll, I'll wrap up my work, and we'll be back here in six months, nine at the most. Oh, Seneca. Please. Well, you're right about one thing. I, I wish we could be together, but... Well? Would you consider staying in New York? When, now? Now. That isn't fair. Why not? Well, you have to make some allowance for my work. My work's waited for three years. Why am I the one who always has to wait? Why am I the one who always has to be fair? You asked me to come to Minnesota with you, and I did. You asked me to wait, and I did. You asked me to live by your lifestyle, and I did. Now, I'm asking you. I can't pack up and move just like that. Why not? You're a very distinguished scientist. No, 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 please, don't do this. With your bowling award, you could get a job anywhere. No, I want you at home with me. Any hospital in this city would be thrilled to have you on staff. They... You are not going to get around me that way. Well, then what am I going to do? Just go home, Seneca. You want, me, you want me to go back without you? I don't want you to go at all, but... No, no, what are you doing? This is just plain stupid. Come on home with me, and, 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 and we'll come back to New York together. It's too late for that. And it isn't stupid. Well, it doesn't make any sense. I'm sorry, darling. It, it's sad, but it does make sense. You contradict everything I say. 
I is there anything I can do that'll change your mind? Nothing you'd be willing to do. All right. All right, then I'm going home. I'll dig in and I'll... See what I can do about finishing. Finishing? Oh. How many times have I heard that? This time I will. Well, whatever. I, I hope it all goes well. Thanks. I hope things go well for you. No. Goodbye, Seneca. I'll tell you what, I'm so mad at you. But I want you to know, I love you. Thank you. Me too. Now just go, will you? Here. I'm afraid you missed him, Doctor. He's... he just left. Oh, I was hoping to introduce myself. Do you know if he's still in the hospital? I believe he's on his way back to Minnesota. Oh, I see. Your son gave me a... a very good tour of the hospital. He was most helpful. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Well, I, I have some work to do. Will you please excuse me? Of course. Thank you.